Welcome, everybody. Another episode of Placed in Shelter with your host, Ryan Caterizzoli. Uh, today is going to be a real special episode. We're actually going to have a guest appearance today. Uh, not from one of my kids either, somebody in the industry. Uh, so you're going to get a, a different viewpoint than just mine. Uh, but before we do that, I have a Malibu update if you've been following. And the, uh, the old Malibu, well, the initial estimate was uh, exactly that, an estimate. Once they uh, decided to open it up and look inside, it is now totaled. So I've gone from in the market to out of the market to back in the market for a vehicle. Uh, so I don't know what the heck I'm going to do. Now's the, not the greatest time to be test driving cars, but you know, what the heck, we'll figure it out, right? So uh, I'm going to stop the sharing here for one second. And you've got me on screen and I've got to read off the accolades here. So today we're going to do a special episode and we're going to have a guest presenter on. If you are catching this on YouTube, you can always reach us live 3 p.m. Central Time using the link in the description. Feel free to join us if you'd like to be a part of the conversation. You can also send us your topics, memes, jokes uh, to placedinshelter at gmail.com. But today we're bringing you a brand new guest speaker. And the accolades here are a mile long, so let's start the list. This was the winner of the Utah Waffle Wars in 2012, the official food of the Utah State Fair in 2014, the best waffle in Salt Lake City 2015 to 2017, the finalist for the Thomas Brand Muffins America's Best Breakfast in 2016, and also featured at the Sundance Film Festival Base Camp in 2016 and 2017. And with that, I'm gonna share my screen once again. And today's episode is gonna be titled Saturday's Waffle. And if anybody's familiar with Richard Larson, Richard is gonna be our guest today. Thank you for the research, Ryan. Oh yes, you know, it was just a, a nice Google search really brought up everything that I was looking for. So today, you know, we really want to get to know you and we want to talk about obviously waffles, but uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of where you're working now, what's your title, what's your territory? Well, obviously you heard a lot about Utah there. I now live in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm with Professional Reps. Uh, I'm the vice president of the Midwest region out here, uh, representing Hacko in Ohio and Kentucky. Uh, very appreciative of the opportunity today to be on and talk about waffles, one of my passions. Well, that's awesome. And uh, before this, you were in this side of the industry. You obviously owned and operated a waffle truck business, Saturday's Waffle. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. So I operated that for about seven years. Um, story goes that my friend showed up on my doorstep late one night. He uh, hated his job. We decided we had to do something else. And decided to open a food truck. Nice. What did, uh, what was a typical menu? What was your best selling waffle? So we completely built the menu around waffles. I believe any good food truck has a real strong focus. Uh, the waffle was the foundation of everything we did. We served a very authentic Liege waffle, uh, but we did it in a non-traditional way. We did things like eggs Benedict and, <clears throat> excuse me, eggs Benedict on top, uh, sausage and gravy, uh, for the Sundance Film Festival that you mentioned, we did avocado and the Sundance Kid, which featured bacon, fresh avocado, poached egg, jalapeno maple syrup, and goat cheese. Awesome. And a Liege waffle is typically a very sweet waffle. It's got sugar cubes right in it. Um, so how was the combination of that sweet and savory together? Is that really what set you apart? Absolutely. One of the accolades that you didn't have on the list is we were described as Salt Lake's best hangover fruit. Oh, well, maybe we can get you to show up to a Hacko University if we ever get out of quarantine. <laughs> that would be a good way to celebrate. This I is that sugar so. you spoke of, Ryan. That's the pearl sugar that's in the waffles. So it's called pearl sugar. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Now, Tip, do you put syrup on those waffles or is it just the sugar that gives it the sweetness? You know, really the syrup is enough. Uh, we've got Nick here in our office in Cincinnati. The first time I made these, he wanted uh, butter and syrup, and I just pointed to the door. Um, <laughs> these are not your typical syrup and butter waffles. They have okay. plenty of those ingredients in them. Now, how long does it take to prepare a Liege waffle as opposed to a batter-style waffle, like a Belgian waffle? 
So it's really intensive as far as the process for making the dough. As you can see, it's actually a dough ball. Uh, we make these from scratch. I still do it. It's kind of one of the breakfast and learn, lunch and learn options we do here in our kitchen. Um, we'll freeze the dough. I'll pull it out the night before. It'll thaw. We'll proof it. And it's about three and a half minutes on the iron. Okay. Well, what temperature do you set it at? Uh, I do 390. 390. And it comes out nice and golden, just like you can see there. They look fantastic. So um, obviously being based around waffles, what were the most important pieces of equipment that you had to be successful? Well, obviously serving waffles, the waffle iron. And I was familiar with Crampoos long before uh, Hacko's partnership with them. Um, we actually discovered these waffles and, or these irons, I should say, and went with these irons for a number of reasons. Uh, one of the big things was cleanability and durability. Okay. Um, how, how easy are they to actually clean? So one of the things you'll see on the literature is we always tout the easy clean system. And these things actually come apart. Um, everybody listening here probably got a waffle iron from, for their wedding. They probably used it once and they probably put it away. Cleaning is the biggest nightmare when it comes to waffle irons, especially on a commercial application. So these actually come all the way apart. Um, it's cast iron, so it still has a delicate care to it. Uh, but we used to have ours soda blasted about once a year, which is the equivalent of powder or sandblasting, but for food safe. Oh. Um, and they were just like new. And uh, then we'd build up that nice fi uh, finish on them, and we'd eventually get to where they're nonstick. Awesome. And when you clean them, uh, or when they're brand new, can you walk us through kind of the proper setup for success? You know, because if I were to get one of those and dump batter in it, uh, I'm probably going to have a bad time. You are. Um, it is going to be a seasoning process. Uh, the manual does guide you through that. Um, it's kind of low temp with oil, uh, reapplying the oil several times um, just till you get that plate seasoned. Uh, the first couple waffles you throw on, especially if you're doing liege, I do suggest spraying the first couple times. But once you get to that seasoning level, you can simply throw those down and they won't stick anymore. Awesome. Awesome. And you're doing that process every time you clean them and you said you were cleaning them once a month? So we would have them soda blasted about once a year, but before every shift, we would turn the iron on for several minutes. We'd get it really hot. All that sugar would uh, turn into carbon, really burn off. And then we'd actually use grill brushes. Okay. And it would make a mess in our truck, but it always got the irons really clean. We just wiped the counter off after. Fantastic. Hey, that's, a, that's great points right there. Um, now, obviously, when it comes to the Crampoos waffle makers, uh, a lot of the people here are familiar. Some of them aren't. We do have a partnership with Crampoos. They're a company out of Brittany, France. They've been in the industry roughly the same time Hacko has been in the late 50s, early 60s, um, and they've been a staple in the market. Now, I can go on and on about features and benefits that you can read in any literature, but from an operating perspective, did you have any tricks of the trade or things that you found that these waffle makers were able to do over the competition? The biggest thing for us was really the things we've discussed already. The okay. fact that we could do a grill brush on this um, and just start our shift. And then what we do with any uh, crumbs that were left on there, we'd have two waffles we'd cook. We'd call them cleaner waffles. We always just threw those first ones away. Gotcha. Uh, got a nice, good finish going. Um, but it, it is a messy process. You're always going to have that residue that's left behind. And burning it off just makes it really easy. Awesome. Awesome. And then, uh, you know, last but not least, how often were you running your waffles on a Saturday? How long did you have those pieces of equipment going on a typical so we would day? Start, sorry, we'd start them about 7 a.m. And we'd go till 2 in the afternoon. And on any given Saturday, we'd go through about 700 to 1,000 waffles. Fantastic. So your waffle iron of choice and a successful business uh, where waffles was the mainstay uh, the Crampoos Hackle Waffle Maker is your choice. Absolutely. Has our yeah. full endorsement. And I haven't paid you anything for this video. <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I think that's all the questions that I have. That kind of fed up a, a good 10 or 12 minutes there. But I always like to leave an opportunity for our guests here to, to reach out to us. 
So as always, everybody at the bottom, you can see the chat and you can open that up and you can feel free to ask any questions that you have and uh, we'll relay those to Richard or even myself. Uh, so it looks like Sarah Jessica Parker is uh, on today, bored in quarantine apparently in her mansion, and she's asking if you are hiring a dishwasher. You know, we're always in the market for good dishwashers. Excellent. All righty, any other questions? We'll give them a minute here. Don't steal my, all right, draft day. Now, uh, Richard, anything else that you can think of maybe that we didn't mention uh, in your experience, obviously working on this side of the business now, something that we didn't mention about these waffle makers? Well, and maybe to expand more on the offering from them, we've got Perfect. the single iron set up here. We've got the 180 degree opening and the 90 degree opening. Okay. We also have double feature. Um, we, they make crepe makers. And they also have different styles of waffle. The one I've been cooking on is the Liège pattern. This is the Brussels pattern, which makes a bigger square, if you will. Uh, we used to use this for our chicken and waffle waffle, which was uh, buttermilk cornmeal. Awesome. Can you, uh, actually, I thought of another question. What's the difference between the 180 degree waffle and the 90 degree waffle? I would say space. Um, but the biggest thing, I definitely prefer the 180. The residue you get that is left in the 90 degree, there's no way to get that out. With the okay. 180, you can toss the iron back and forth and get that butter and that sugar off the plate while you're working. Awesome. Uh, one of the other benefits I have been looking at would be uh, the fact that the 180 will allow you to use the batter, and then that way you can put the batter on one side, close the waffle iron, and then completely flip both of them over and that'll allow you to get it in every nook and cranny so you get that really beautiful waffle at the end. Doesn't apply as much with a liege, but any type, type of batter uh, waffle would be an advantage Definitely. there as well. Awesome, actually, it looks like we've got another question here from Kayla. Have you used anything other than dough? For example, could you make a falafel waffle or perhaps a cookie waffle? So we did have, a couple things we did. We didn't go as crazy as um, like hash browns on your waffle iron. Um, we did make a s'more waffle where we'd mix chocolate into the dough. Uh, that got a little bit too hot. It would scorch. Um, but we found ways to kind of improvise with that. The other thing we did is we did a cookie mix and we called them Wookiees, like Ooh. waffle cookies. I'll take one of the Chewbacca's. <laughs> exactly. That's fantastic. Well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. Um, I did not prepare any memes today because I thought this one would go a little bit longer than normal. So without any other questions, we will close it out here. Um, again, if you're catching this on YouTube, you can always watch us live, 3 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. And let us know you're enjoying the content by liking, uh, sharing, and also hitting that bell notification that'll let you know every time that we post a new video. Uh, Richard, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Ryan, and the whole HACO team. We really appreciate it. Uh, and for that, we're going to wrap up today's episode. So we will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks again for joining.